text-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining our October webinar on our backup service, the Phone Pro Backup Service and Backup Strategies for uh, Project Online. Uh, my name is Jose Levy, and for Phone Pro Software, uh, I have with me uh, my colleague Irina, who is going to be uh, presenting later on our demonstration. Um, but what we wanted to talk today was um, backup. Uh, I think it's one of our probably uh, understated services uh, of, of our entire product portfolio. It, it plays a very important part for some organizations. Um, as you see within our overall set of uh, products and services, um, it, it is uh, a, an important part. It usually comes right after phone books when an organization is uh, has migrated or is doing change management. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. And just for those that aren't familiar with uh, for Fluent Pro Backup, we have uh, just a few highlights of what the service entails. Uh, it's basically um, a backup service on Azure. Uh, it, it has a storage account uh, provided by Fluent Pro, or it can use a customer uh, Azure account. And it, the product was really designed to um, provide backup and restore of uh, project plans, which are the MPP files. Uh, together with the project sites and the content that are within the sites. And it also allows uh, backup of the configuration. So if the organization wants to maintain you know, a copy uh, as changes have, are taking place of a PWA configuration, that's also available. So um, in terms of uh, the operations that you can actually do, um, and we'll get into this in greater detail through the presentation, it is item level. So you can decide uh, specifically, you know, what you want to bring um, into the backup. You um, you can schedule it or have it be ad hoc, you know, at the moment. And scheduling means, you know, a day and time when you want it to occur uh, with frequency. Um, there's document retention policies in terms of when you um, want the backup to be maintained. In other words, it'll just automatically uh, be maintained on a, um, you know, within a, 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 a calendar basis or, you know, you can retain, and you'll see that in a second. It's easier to see than to explain. Um, there's monitoring in terms of uh, having uh, the service tell you what has failed or been completed um, and also notifications when projects, specific projects, or backups uh, are not able to be completed. Uh, and also our support teams, so our help desk is always monitoring the backup service. So, you know, in the event that you have some corrupt projects or data that is uh, not able to be backed up, we're, we're, we will make you aware of it and try to resolve. Um, just recently, we had that instance where, you know, out of 100 projects, two weren't able to back up. And you know, there's, there's data issues with that project, and that's why uh, they weren't able to be backed up for that customer. And our support team actually inter intervened to make sure that we could resolve that. Uh, you know, in terms of security, there's um, data encryption being utilized as part of the service. So, um, and we can provide all that information to customers as needed. Uh, in terms of the just a very high level architecture overview. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, we have uh, a Project Online PWA site that's been registered within the backup service, which is also running on Azure. Uh, the backup takes place uh, for the projects that have been selected on the you know frequency. That backup then is stored on you know on Azure storage. Uh, when the admin wants to do a restore, they go to the Azure storage, initiate the restore operation for. Uh, the project project sites or the config they want to bring, and that actually restores it back to the same PWA site um, that's been registered as part of the backup. So, um, you know, from a from a processing standpoint, again, it's all <clears throat> taking place uh, in Azure. So, you know, wh why do we actually have this service? Well, the primary reason is because um, out of the box, um, the backup and recovery in Project Online and specific to MPP files, so the project files, the project plans, um, is only available at the site collection level. 
So we can't really, you know, if you have an issue with a specific project for many, you know, whatever reason, there's multiple reasons why a customer might have an issue with a project, um, you would actually have to um, register a ticket and request through Microsoft support uh, for that site collection to be restored, and um, it can take days um, to for have that to have that happen. And if you're in a, dealing with a mission critical project, you have a compressed timeline. Uh, you know that's just not going to be acceptable to the to the customer. Um, you know you can do a manual MPP save offline, um, which you know it's it's uh, doable but not very feasible if you're talking about um, a set of projects and project online that is large, you know, greater than 100 or, um, you know, in, in some cases we're actually supporting customers that have thousands of projects. So uh, that just is not going to work. That manual work and uh, saving offline is not going to work. And especially on a long-term basis, the administrator would just have, um, you know, just be a nightmare, even for the project managers to track and, and um, all those different uh, MPP uh, offline files. So, um, the other reason, and there's you know the other 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 rationale why customers uh, subscribe to the backup is you know they they are required by IT to have a backup and archive policy. So the backup of project online you know fits into uh, those requirements uh, in IT. Uh, the second is that you know unregulated sectors, regulated industries, um, government, healthcare, financial, uh, energy. Uh, you're actually um, required to have uh, backups of data uh, of this level. So, you know, whether it's for compliance, regulatory, or contractual requirement, if you're serving the government, you're going to need to have uh, backup of project plans and, and project data, and that's where uh, the service fits. Um, you know, it could be a, a, a PMO or a project manager that's just dealing with a mission-critical project, then they do require that backup, and they require it on a frequent basis uh, as a service from IT, and so you know that again is where we fit in. You know the final is versioning. We have some customers that you know like it for maintaining versions when you're managing something large and important, so they can go back and and do comparisons of you know where they were uh, previously. Uh, I'm sure there's other uh, scenarios and and uh, rationale, but I mean I would tell you that the the um, where this comes to bear mostly is when the the administrator of a project online site does not have a backup and there is a data corrupt issue and um, they are exposed. So, you know, peace of mind is another one just to make sure that you can provide the PMO and the project managers at the uh, uh, sanity level that you can actually bring back a project that, uh, you know, has gone wrong. So another concept we want to talk about is, um, you know, difference between backup and archive, and this is coming up a lot in our discussions with customers. I mean, backup we consider really, uh, you know, that operational recovery of the project file, project site, and content um, from, you know, the the current working copy, and we need it to be reliable and have data integrity. So the backup service fulfills that because as you're scheduling it, you can actually recall. Uh, or restore any of those um, older backups that you've made. Uh, in terms of archive, this is more of, you know, at the end of the year um, for, again, requirements, uh, policy issues, we want to uh, store a version that's no longer changing. So that's what we would categorize as an, an archive. And, um, you know, that usually is part of a data retention policy. Um, you know, depends on how the organization classifies project online, but for the most part, we see that um, you know this is going to be more of a um, clean cleanup, annual cleanup of projects in order to maintain the PWA lean and mean, and make sure that we don't have um, a lot of uh, old projects and or or um, close inactive projects uh, within our production PWA, and both are supported by backup by the backup service. Uh, the primary um, service is the, the items on the left, but you know we do have a SKU that actually allows you to do both um, uh, using um, using the Fluent Pro uh, backup. So, to, to some before we get into the actual features of the product, you know, so some what are some of the best 
best practices that we've seen, you know, for backup and archive. I mean, I, get, I we can sum up in these five, and again, we can get into more detail and more specificity based on the customer requirement. But what you want to do is focus really on, you know, active projects in that production B PWA that um, on a scheduled basis you're going to have uh, backed up. Uh, so there's, and you'll see in the demo, we have uh, ways to select uh, which projects you're going to um, have as part of that scheduled backup. And then, again, as an admin, you're relieved um, from um, you're relieved from having to do that uh, on an ad hoc basis. Um, and, you know, your organization is secure from that standpoint. In terms of the frequency, what we see is weekly um, or you know, as needed, really, weekly or every two weeks at a minimum, and you're really following the um, status reporting cycle of the organization. So if, if there are status reports that are required by the PMs, then, you know, the corresponding project plan uh, is going to be also uh, backed up in the project site and content. Um, move, close, cancel, and active projects to the archive PWA. So this is becoming more of a practice. Again, uh, leave the... Um, the production PWA only with uh, active projects um, and move everything away. And, and again, you can schedule this uh, depending on what uh, your document retention policy is and also, you know, reporting because you might want to keep some of those items that, uh, that are closed or canceled as part of, you know, reporting in your production PWA. Uh, the, P, the project managers and the PMO, they're, they're going to be offered the ability to do those ad hoc backups. And we'll show that, you know, when we when we talk about backup now, it means that you're actually going to go in and perform a backup at, off schedule. So, um, you know, important projects or, um, you know, if, if there's significant changes that have occurred to a project, uh, a PMO will, you know, request for that backup to occur uh, immediately. And then the, the final is, and it really important, you know, just to, even on a very basic level, document the process. Uh, so the PMO and the PMs, everybody understands what the, the backup SLA is. And, um, you know, everybody's within the, the boundaries of what you're offering uh, as a service. So um, I wanted to introduce some terminology in terms of what the major features are. And all of this is within our uh, support help uh, site. So we have a help help site for all the products of Fluent Pro. Um, there's a specific one for backup and everything that uh, we've talked about here and more uh, is covered within it. Um, but in the demo, which we're about to see, you're going to you're gonna see something, you know, a screen that's going to show you your backups. And those are the, the URLs for the PWAs that you have subscribed. So the subscription is per PWA URL. And in most cases, I say all cases, is the production PWA. Some folks actually also have a, a test or a dev PWA in there also. Um, you go into settings, and that's where you actually get to define how the backup is going to operate, what your retention policy is um, in terms of maintaining uh, older backups. Uh, you develop then a backup profile where you define um, the backup for that uh, for a specific um, set of projects within that URL, and there you will uh, define the frequency. You know, in my case, I have a backup for, you know, Friday at 8, where I pick up all active projects from a, URL, from a specific URL, and that's what gets uh, backed up. What's the content? So are there specific projects, uh, project sites in the configuration? Once you save that, uh, it gets scheduled, but you can also do what I said, backup now, which is, you know, take that definition of projects and do uh, the backup. Um, once you, at a higher level, you will see that we'll go into the restore um, section of the administrator panel, and then you get to do the reverse, which is select projects from a backup and uh, take them back to that PWA. And then finally, the notification panels that tell you, okay, where are we? Um, in terms of the backups that were done, were there any issues, um, the email notifications that you can actually also receive uh, from the uh, from the the service. So I'm going to turn it over to Irina real quick, who's actually going to um, give us a demonstration, and she's you know going to walk us through the 
the configuration um, of the of the backup. We're going to see um, output of you know running a backup, what happens when we complete a backup, and then uh, the restore uh, operation. So I'm going to turn it over to her. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I can see that we have a few questions here, but I think we will be able to answer after the uh, webinar is over, right? Give me one moment, please. I will share my screen. One moment, please. Um, so let's review backup functionality. I will show you the steps on how to backup your data and then how you can restore it. Uh, as soon as you log in to your Fluent Pro account or register your Fluent Pro account and um, add PWAs that you would like to uh, backup your data for, um, you will get to the My Backup page uh, here, the My Backups page. Um, well, uh, this page, it displays the list of backup products activated for your account. As you can see, uh, I have the um, URLs of uh, my PWAs. Um, and here I can see also the plan uh, for each um, project online uh, PWA and uh, the time to the next backup and the expiration date is also available here. Um, in terms of security, I would like to mention at once that um, all connections between backup services and uh, end users are secured uh, with HTTPS uh, using modern connection protocols. And all customer data uh, stored in our end is secured using the the AES-256 um, ciphers and encryption keys, um, which also secured with 2048-bit uh, uh, um, uh, asymmetric keys. Uh, so you can select uh, what PWA you would, uh, will be working with here. Uh, let's select uh, the first one. And as you click on the URL here, you will get to the backup uh, for this specific PWA page. And um, on this page, uh, you will see the information about all backups uh, that were performed for this PWA. All the completed backups will be present here. Uh, you can also see um, uh, the profile uh, used for this backup, its status, and the size here. You can also see the um, total space usage uh, as well. And here we have two options. Uh, we have the settings options and the backup now uh, option. Uh, the setting option, it opens the settings page where you can update connection settings. You can set up backup profile there for scheduled backups. You can update permissions as well. And uh, the backup now option, it um, allows us to create an on-demand um, backup. Uh, we will review the backup settings and I will show you how you can perform the scheduled um, backups first and then we will go to the backup now option. So uh, let's open the settings. Uh, in the settings section here we have the connection settings. Uh, you will see the retention policy, the backup profiles and uh, permission. Let's review them all in details. Uh, so the first one, connection settings. Um, this section represents a BW URL, a login and password. And uh, these are the um, uh, credentials that uh, were provided to the backup service while adding PWAs. Um, login and password are used by the backup service to get access to Project Online PWA to perform the backup process. And in case uh, you want to change a user account, which will be used um, to access Project Online PWA, uh, you can uh, do this in the connection settings. You can change login and password uh, for the new ones and click Update button. Uh, the next one is retention policy setting. 
this section allows you to manage retention period for your backup uh, files. And um, actually, uh, if your company has any specific policy for data storage period, uh, then the retention policy will help you keep safe all information and still follow the internal rules of the company. So here you can set a specific retention policy for each type of your backups, for the daily backups, weekly, monthly, manual backups, meaning the ad hoc uh, backups. So let's say I would like to uh, delete uh, backups older than three months of, for the daily backups, right? Um, so uh, backup service will automatically detect uh, the backups uh, that are ready to be deleted according to the retention policy settings and will delete them. So as soon as you set um, the settings here as needed, uh, you can click update and um, this um, setting will be applied. Uh, you can also set um, it to never and in this case your backups will never be deleted. So the next one is uh, backup profiles. Uh, here as you can see already uh, have a few scheduled backups for this PWA, the daily backup and weekly backup. Uh, you can see the type here as well, the status when the next backup will take place and you can also delete um, these profiles uh, if needed. We can also add a new backup, so I already have the daily backup, weekly, weekly backup, let's add um, monthly backup, for example. So if we click new, uh, we will get to the backup uh, profile page. And uh, here we can actually decide what uh, data exactly we would like to backup uh, right uh, now, like schedule the backup uh, and when it will take place. So as you open this backup profile page, you can uh, change the title. Um, let's say it will be a demo. Uh, profile. Uh, you can populate some description here, you can uh, type the email uh, for uh, notifications and um, uh, as soon as the backup is completed you will receive uh, an email saying that the backup is completed uh, for the email that you provide here. Um, also all backup uh, all backups, they are uh, disabled uh, by default and to activate uh, this um, backup profile you will need to check the enabled um, checkbox here. You can also use uh, the specific uh, credentials uh, and um, uh, for example in the case if you want to use um, any different account for this profile you can just check, uh, use a specific credential checkbox and add uh, login and credentials here. Uh, in this section. We will also select the type of the backup. So already have the daily one, weekly, uh, you can add another daily or weekly backup as well. I will add a monthly backup, for example, let's say it will be um, in October. We can uh, set uh, the time here and uh, the days in October. For example, it will be on the 14th, uh, 24th and 29th and um, we can also uh, select the content uh, actually what exactly we would like to uh, back up on this specific time and uh, dates. Uh, we can select PWA configuration with the PWA configuration um, like everything will be backupped at once, you can select the entities there um, but with projects and uh, project sites we can uh, select what exact projects we would like to back up uh, on this specific time. Uh, so you can select them all, you can select um, uh, only modified projects for example for the last uh, six days only. Um, you can select your projects by view, you can type the name of the view here and um, back up these projects or you can just select them manually. If you check the selected um, option you will see that uh, zero items are now selected and if you click modify uh, you will get uh, to the window where you can add uh, projects. Here you can also sort them by uh, last modified or by their view and um, now all the projects that I have on my uh, BWA will be um, seen here in this uh, screen and I can select or deselect uh, the ones that um, I need or don't need in this case. So you can select them all of course uh, or we can select just um, let's say a few projects that we would like to pick up right now. Um, as soon as you select the projects you need you can click OK and you will see that these projects appear on the selected projects page. You can also remove them or add more projects if needed and as we click OK we will see that two items are now selected. 
uh, these two projects. Uh, we can also select the SharePoint content. Again, we can uh, select everything within the SharePoint content. Uh, we can select um, <clears throat> the SharePoint sites only for selected projects, which is actually our recommendation. Uh, you can also select only the modified uh, sites and also select the time uh, for example, for what period uh, you would like to um, back up uh, the modified uh, sites. And uh, you can also select them manually. Uh, this procedure will be just the same as with, uh, your project schedules. So I will select to back up my uh, SharePoint sites for the selected projects. And as you click Save, this profile will be saved. Also, um, again, I would like to pay your attention that um, uh, we'll need to enable uh, this profile so it uh, starts um, back up in the data on the specified um, time and dates. Um, and also the um, uh, if you um, uh, if you don't e um, enable this uh, profile, it will be disabled. It will be still present um, on the profiles uh, page, but uh, it won't. Um, uh, it, it is not active, it won't be active. Uh, and a schedule backups uh, will not be created for disabled profile. However, uh, if you disable a profile, it allows you to stop creating backups and pre preserve this profile for historical purposes uh, without uh, the necessity to remove it. And um, for example, you can disable uh, your profile uh, for a while and then you can enable it again. You don't need to create your profiles again and again. You can just disable and enable them um, as per your needs. So I will click Save here. And um, now we will see this demo profile uh, backup uh, here. So it is a monthly backup uh, and the next backup will be in two days. If you click Delete here, the, uh, this profile will be uh, absolutely deleted uh, from here. And of course, you can always edit an existing profile. Uh, if you open this profile from here, you can add any uh, changes, uh, click Save and um, in this way edit uh, the profile. Uh, one more setting that we have here is permissions and um, this section allows to add or delete users who will have access to backup for project online. Uh, you can add uh, a new user here. If you um, add a user's Fluon Pro account and click the update button, um, this user will um, be added here and uh, it will have access to the backup for Project Online uh, for this specific PWA that we are working uh, with right now. Uh, you can also add uh, multiple Fluon Pro accounts. You can separate them with either semicolons or commas. And uh, users with permissions, uh, they will be able to change connection settings. Uh, retention policy. Uh, they also can create and change um, backup profiles, but they, but, uh, they can't delete uh, an existing profile. And they can also create and pause um, the on-demand backups, but again, they will not be able to delete anything. Um, and um, <clears throat> these users, they won't have a possibility to add uh, any other users. And in case you don't want a user um, to have these permissions, you can always delete uh, this user's Fluent Pro account from the permis permission section here. And uh, as you click Update button, uh, this user won't have access anymore. Uh, so these are all the settings here. Let's go back um, to the backup um, for this specific PWE page. Uh, one more option here is the Backup Now option. This is uh, how you can uh, launch uh, the backup uh, right now. Uh, if you click backup now, you can also populate some uh, notes here and uh, you can type the email where the notification will be sent um, and uh, you can actually select the content as well. So let's select um, a few projects. Let's click modify, add a few projects and uh, launch uh, the backup process right now. So again, all the projects that I have on my PWA, they will be now uh, present here and I can select the ones that I would like to pick up right now. Let's say these three projects, I click OK um, and uh, I will be able to 
I see them here. I will also select the SharePoint sites for the selected projects. Click Start. And uh, as you click Start, uh, this um, uh, backup um, will appear uh, here on the backups for this specific PWE page. And you will see that its status is pending. And uh, also, um, as soon as the backup starts, you will see the progress bar saying uh, what is the percentage complete and you will see the completed status as soon as uh, it is over, it is finished. Uh, so you can also check the details for the completed backups. Uh, these are all the backups that uh, have been completed. I can see their status uh, here. So I can select any uh, completed backup, review the details um, here, the backup information, um, section will show us the URL and login uh, for this PWA, its status if it is completed. And please note that uh, you can only perform, uh, you can only restore a PWA data for the backups that uh, were completed, right? Uh, so you can see the start and finish date here, the size uh, as well. And uh, you can see what uh, data uh, was backupped and if you restore uh, the data, you can also select from uh, these um, elements what data you would like to restore. So let's open our project plans and project sites. We can see what uh, project and project sites were backupped and uh, what uh, which ones we would like to restore right now. Uh, we have a few options here as well. You can view the details uh, for um, your PWA um, data that you have backed. So if we click here, we will be able to uh, see uh, all the custom fields, uh, all the enterprise data, workflow and PDPs, uh, look and feel, we can see like everything within the PWA configuration, we can't uh, select the elements that we would like to restore, um, but uh, we can review the information here. We can see the actual names of this uh, enterprise custom fields um, of our projects and um, uh, the information for our project, the project details page as well. So everything you can review the information here as well as the SharePoint sites. Um, here, another option is uh, to uh, restore your backups. Uh, so if you click uh, restore here, you can restore uh, the information to uh, the same PWA. Uh, again, you will see the um, backup information here and uh, you can select the content uh, that you would like to restore to this PWA. Let's select, um, well, let's select everything. And um, uh, here you will see the URL of the PWA where you are uh, restoring this information to. Uh, let's let's provide the um, uh, login and uh, password here. You can also uh, provide the uh, notification email and uh, the email uh, will be sent uh, with the information about your uh, about the restore process here. So let's start uh, the restore process and um, it will appear on the um, backup information here. Uh, you will see the uh, restores, the one that is completed. Uh, you can see the information for it. If we click here, we can see what information we have uh, already restored and what is in progress. You, you will see the progress bar and as soon as it is 100% you will receive the email notification. Um, <clears throat> so um, let's, um, you can also delete uh, this um, uh, backup completely. I will just go back. Uh, you can see that the progress bar is in progress for the backup that we have launched. Uh, so you can review the status uh, here as well. So this is pretty much everything that I wanted to show you today. I will give uh, the right to present back to uh, Jose. He has a few slides to show us. Thanks a lot, Irina. So um, just a couple of summary slides and then we'll open it up for uh, Q&A. So as you saw, 
um, you saw all the capabilities um, of backup. You know, it's automated, automated and scheduled, so it really relieves the administrator from having to do that task. Um, and for very large environments, you know, this is ideal. Uh, we have a secure environment with data encryption, so there's really no risk, and it's all in Azure, uh, just like Project Online is. Uh, if the customer wants to use their own account, you know, they can do that also in order to add additional security. Um, it's scalable to customer requirements. So the lowest subscription is 50 projects. The highest one, um, believe it or not, we're scoping something now for 40,000 projects. So um, it's just a matter of adding additional processing server uh, servers and storage. And um, so, and and you know, we also have the the concept of accounts uh, for processing. So uh, there's multiple ways of addressing that, but you know, essentially it, it is very scalable. Um, we consider it's cost effective because it's based on usage. So, in, and that's a, a, an important point when we're inquiring on, you know, just how many projects require backup. So, it might be not that all items uh, in a PWA require backup. You know, there's a lot of in-flight um, early stage opportunity assessment projects that, you know, shouldn't shouldn't actually require backup. So, you know, re really need to focus on defining what's that set of active projects that we that, that the customer needs to back up. And then finally, um, there's an active help desk. The service has monitoring, it has notifications, and the support is included uh, within it. Um, um, I'm listing here some of the additions um, that we have. We can really price any volume. So what you see here is really our uh, our volume volume breakpoints, but if you know somebody came in with 200 projects, um, we can go ahead and provide pricing. Uh, for you know, we we we, we require uh, you to write to sales at fluentpro.com, and then we'll respond with a quote uh, for a specific customer. So if you have a scenario for a customer, you know, with with specific volume, uh, please um, you know contact us directly, and we'll we'll respond with uh, what that is. Um, the key question also is, you know, like I said, how many active projects, project sites require backup? Not everything requires a backup. And on what frequency? That frequency is really important to us because it, it defines, um, you know, the load that we're going to have to meet uh, during a, a window uh, in order to do operations, backup operations within that PWA. So, um, you know, a lot of times we get into discussions and, you know, you'll, You'll hear us ask that question, you know, what, what is the frequency? Is it going to be weekly? Is it going to be monthly? Uh, or so on. So just uh, for those that have stayed, uh, <laughs> um, a little bit of a heads up in terms of what's coming for backup. So um, at the end of uh, this month, uh, you know, beginning of November, we're going to be, be begin introducing, um, you know, backup basically is going to grow up and Fluent Book's capabilities are going to come together. And uh, this also addresses the archive, any archive questions that you might have. But basically, um, we're going to introduce what's called governance and administration. Um, and it's basically a console that allows you to access the different uh, services that are provided by uh, Fluent Pro. So the, the two that are most logical, um, you know, are administrative administration change management features within Fluent Books and the backup. So um, here's just an early screen of what you see where, you know, you're going to have tiles that are going to represent the environments that a customer has or you might have. And um, connections, you know, uh, highlight how you're going to be able to take data or configurations from one site to the other. And then within the ellipsis, when I open it up, you see that you can see some of the operations that you're going to be able to do within that uh, PWA itself. So in this case, uh, comparisons, doing a configuration copy, data copy. So data copy will represent the archive because you'll take data from what would be a uh, production PWA, for instance, and maybe copy it to an archive PWA. So um, and you will be able to select exactly what from that PWA you're going to take from the production to the archive. Uh, document configuration, you know, is something that Fluent Books currently has. You see your prominently backup. So backup, uh, what you just saw, is going to be within um, this, uh, you know, this user experience and this service. 
and those, so every, everything, all the different operations that you just saw are going to occur, and they will occur per uh, PWA that you have subscribed. So in this case, we're talking about a, you know, if, if this was my production PWA where backup is highlighted, you can see that it's turned on, which means that I can actually perform backups on uh, and restore on that uh, on that PWA. Um, and with that, um, that's really all uh, I have. So we'll open it up for uh, questions and answers, and we have a few that have been uh, listed. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, go through them. So the first one deals with um, uh, trials. Uh, so we do we do offer trials for customers. Uh, you know, typically what happens is we'll get a request from a partner with a specific volume for a customer or a customer directly, and um, we provide a, a quote um, and um, we offer the trial for two weeks. We can extend it, but essentially you get a, an account just like you saw uh, Irina uh, operate, and from there you can um, do your backups test and you know answer any technical questions during that process. You know, if there's any security that we need to uh, address, we can also do that. Um, and, you know, if they, again, if the customer requires extension, we can extend it. But typically, it, it's all triggered by having some kind of a, you know, a formal quote in front of a, a customer. Uh, if you're a partner and would like to try it out and, you know, we're uh, participating in this webinar, you know, feel free to, you know, request it and we will uh, we'll go ahead and activate an account. Um, I, I think when we get gas out, it'll be more relevant because that's where backup is going to is going to reside. Um, so a lot of customers um, that uh, you know might be interested in the service. So you know when we work with partners, um, historically uh, there's two benefits to partners. Uh, for those that are on the call that are partners, uh, there is obviously a reseller commission, which for some is important, for some not. But more importantly, uh, we've seen that partners take this and then offer uh, you know backup and archive policy for uh, for the PMO. For projects, a, a lot of times, believe it or not, organizations don't really have this well documented, um, and are not really aware of the pitfalls of not having a backup. So, adding a service component to develop that capability uh, internally for the PMO um, works well. It, it, you know, depending on the size of the organization, it could be a short or long uh, engagement. But um, uh, you know, that's uh, something that uh, Flowpro does not provide, and the partner uh, service partners. Are you know better suited to do that? Uh, a question on the panel about uh, moving projects to an archive PWA. So currently, or historically, that was provided by uh, Fluent Books. So for those of you that have Fluent Books, you know Fluent Books um, will allow you to obviously bring down projects and then upload projects to an archive PWA. If you do not have Fluent Books um, and are interested in backup, we we will provide that that copy capability from production to your archive PWA uh, as part of the backup subscription. So that's the, within the backup service, that's a formal way of doing it. Um, and that is actually available now uh, through something we have, which was called Flume Books Online, which is now, you know, GAS. So um, you will uh, have the ability to do that archiving into the archive PWA. Uh, question regarding SharePoint site backup. Um, Yes, it detects all changes in the site, um, and um, just specifically, since I did ask uh, the technical team, it is we're we're talking about um, it will detect. Let me make sure I get this. Right. Yeah, last change basically. Anything that changes will be um, uh, backed up as part of the the SharePoint project site. We've never actually tried to do the one notebook, but uh, uh, documents will will be backed up. Uh, list items will be backed up. Uh, the one on notebook uh, is a good uh, test. I actually asked, and uh, I said, well, it's not usually the case, but yeah, it should it should be backed up. Uh, we would have to test that specific item. But documents, list, anything that's within the site and has changed will be backed up. In terms of scalability, like I said, uh, the lowest level subscription is 50 projects. Um, we do have customers that have uh, 2,000 projects right now, so um, really no limitation and again we're scaling much higher amounts 
So uh, it's a matter of just defining again how many and what's the frequency. Um, is it possible to read open the backup configuration data with Fluent Books? Uh, the backup, the configuration that's within backup is, is specific to uh, the backup service. So it's not, um, it's it, you cannot open it within Fluent Books. Um, the governance and administration service will have that, uh, but the current backup service does not. Um, you would have to, you know, download configuration, save workspace, and then uh, use Fluent Books for that for that operation. Um, question on backup pricing: As I said, please um, request specifically, you know, and we'll we'll go ahead and uh, provide pricing. Um, can we schedule backup of a complete project online instance? Well, again, it, it's just the number of projects that you select, but uh, all projects within the PWA, as you saw uh, in the demonstration, can be selected. So effectively, yes, and all project sites can be selected. So yes, you just need to make sure that you have a subscription to manage the number of projects that you have there. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because in project online, as you know, there's publishing of items that might be either early stage, uh, things that aren't, um, active, um, so uh, I we don't recommend it for for doing entire PWA uh, uh, project backups. Um, so if, if you want to, you can, but it you know in, in those cases it's, it should be small because uh, you don't want to um, uh, you know use your subscription to backup things that aren't really active. Um, is it possible to back up data to customer infrastructure instead of Azure? Uh, no. Um, right now, it's just Azure, uh, the Azure uh, account for the customer. So the customer would need to have an Azure account. Uh, next question. So the entire project is going to back up. The question is, if I restore one project, Backup, is it possible, including all the actuals or just the structure of the MPP files? Uh, no, the actuals are backed up. Everything is backed up. So, you know, actuals do come over. You know, the entire MPP file and its content will be there. Um, can we back up from one PW site and restore it to another site? Um, so, there you, you can upgrade to include additional URLs. Uh, the standard SKU is backup to production. But if you want it to include another one, you can. As you saw in governance administration, there will be the ability to copy. Uh, you'll just need to have that PWA subscribed as part of the uh, as part of the service. So the answer is yes. Um, can you restore a product back to a test tenant? Same 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 question. Yes, um, you can, but it has to be an upgrade. And uh, again, within the new service, it will be part of it. Um, you will need to have it subscribed. Uh, for those of you in the call, you know our products, most of them in the case of Fulham Books are operate by having a uh, number of PWAs per tenant described. Um, if the project sites are creating another site collection other than PWA, would this tool still work for SharePoint content backup? Um, you know, the answer is yes. We just need to um, uh, have that PWA registered. And the same concept in terms of volume, we need to know how many project sites would need require backup uh, as part of that subscription. Oh, and the last one, yes, that's a. <laughs> I knew I should get a, a prize for this question, so I knew someone was going to answer. Are there any plans to back up timesheets? So timesheets have been requested in the past, and the issue is that they're uh, rather complex to uh, back up and restore. Uh, the roadmap does include them. However, it's likely that restore will be on request. Uh, so in terms of an automated service for timesheets, uh, given the, the complexity, it's unlikely that there will be uh, a fully automated service. Uh, you'll be able to do backups, but restore uh, will be um, on request to the uh, to the help desk. So um, stay tuned on that one. Uh, Irina, do we have anything else to add? Have I missed anything? Yeah, I think you have covered all the questions as far as I can see. All right, team, if there's uh, not any other questions, we'll give you back some time. Thanks, everyone, for participating and look forward to hearing from you. And um, have a good uh, afternoon or morning. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Goodbye. Thank you for your time.